You are Locked On Cougars. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of the podcast. We have a lot to cover on today's show. Surprisingly enough, Bob Bowlesby stepping down as the Big 12 commissioner. He will no longer lead the conference. BYU is set to join in 2023. What to make of that if you're a BYU fan? We'll also talk about the transfer portal for BYU basketball. Another scholarship player, Hunter Erickson, enters the portal. Is he the last? Probably not, but we'll dig into that as well. And, of course, we will catch up on everything else going on in BYU sports news as well. BYU baseball, yet again, losing in St. George. We've got it all ahead on today's show. So without further ado, thank you for making us your first listen of the day, and let's get rolling. This is the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 6th, 2022. Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars. You can see that right down here. It says Jay Catch and my Twitter handle, Jacob C. Hatch. Love when you guys join us right here on Locked On Cougars. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, finding us on YouTube, welcome on in. Uh, by way of background, my name is Jake. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as an executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. I also do some spot hosting duties around the station as well. But more importantly, I I'm here talking BYU sports every day, and we are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, Locked On Cougars is your only daily podcast focused on all things BYU. We cover it all, basketball, football, every other sport in the BYU athletic department, and even some topics beyond that. So a huge thank you once again for joining us here. All right, let's get rolling today. And big news out of the Big 12, BYU set to join the conference in 2023, but there will be a new head of the conference as Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby has announced that he is stepping down from his position. Uh, the expectation, according to Texas Tech President Lawrence Skuvenik, is that they will have a new commissioner hopefully in place within 90 days. Obviously, that is subject to being sped up or slowed down if need be. But Bob Bowlesby, the guy that brought BYU into the Big 12 Conference, he is stepping aside. It sounds like he will not be stepping aside completely. He is under contract with the Big 12 through 2025. It sounds like he will take on a different role inside the Big 12 uh, front offices there. The front office, I guess, commission uh, the Big 12 uh Conference offices? Yeah, there we go. Conference offices. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the word, Jake. But anyways, I think the bigger storyline here is there will be a new sheriff running the Big 12. And how will that affect BYU football and BYU sports in general? I think the big question mark is that you have to look and wait and see who the new commissioner is going to be. Uh, to bring this closer to home, many of you listening to this are very familiar with the University of Utah and their inclusion in the Pac-12. Well, Larry Scott, his run as commissioner at the Pac-12 was full of all kinds of controversy and not the good kind. Let's be very clear about that. And George Klyovkov has come in. He's an outsider who was an executive with MGM. It was an entertainment guy working in Las Vegas. He has come in with, I think, a fresh kind of look at how collegiate sports are going to be. And uh, if you read the reports, Bob Bowlesby, it sounds like he just got fed up with what college sports is maybe morphing into, where it's more of a professional type deal, especially in football. Uh, it seems like it's headed that direction. Pay for play is on the way if it's not already here, uh, just under the guise of being name, image, and likeness, those NIL deals. But it sounds like Bowlesby decided, you know what, it's time for me to step aside. And he's had a long career as an administrator, worked at Stanford for a long time, has been an athletic director for a number of years, and obviously he's been leading the Big 12 for a decade now, starting in 2012. He was the longest tenured Power 5 commissioner as well, so now uh, he leaves a little bit of a vacuum. I think four, uh, yeah, I said four of the five uh, Power 5 commissioners have now switched over since 2020. I think the pandemic played into that. I think all the challenges that collegiate sports went through during that period, and obviously the new changes coming I think Bob Bullsby said in a statement, it is time for somebody else to take the mantle of Big 12 commissioner and lead them forward. I am a bit stunned, though, if I'm being honest, that he is stepping aside before locking in the new grant of rights, a new TV deal for this conference, because he is the guy. And let me be very clear about this. Bob Bullsby, he is the guy that led the 
Big 12 through a lot of tumultuous months last year. Think about it. There were a lot of people out there thinking the Big 12 was going to absolutely crumble with Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC. He maneuvered this conference into adding four schools, including BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, as uh, well as, um, who am I forgetting? UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, duh, Houston, the Cougars, and also BYU, the BYU Cougars, both Cougars uh, coming into the Big 12. But the biggest thing is I think he realizes that he does not maybe have the juice to continue to press forward here. He's also the guy who is kind of the architect or one of the architects for the uh, 12-team college football playoff proposal. I still expect to uh, join in the college football playoff when the new deal for the college football playoff is ratified, that would be going to affect about around the same time that the big 12 media deal that's expected to be negotiated over the next few years will also go into effect. There are so many questions out there with regards to the big 12 and its future now with a new commissioner coming in. But I think the biggest thing, if you're a BYU fan is just be happy. BYU's inside the power five. I saw tricky Tanner, one of our good listeners or good friends uh, said that, well, does this mean that, BYU might find a way to get themselves out of the Big 12 or find themselves dumped by the Big 12. I highly doubt that because let's just, in a word, lawyers, that's what will happen if BYU were a new commissioner were to come and say, you know what, we're dumping BYU. I can tell you this much, BYU is going to be jamming lawyers down the Big 12's throat at that point. I do not anticipate that. I think the Big 12 is fully intent on bringing in the Cougars. I think that BYU is part of their future in terms of the TV deal because BYU opens up that late night window. You may not like the 8 o'clock, 8.15, 8.30 starts in football games. Guess what? Get used to it, folks. It is going to be part of the deal. The funny thing about this is in BYU football land, you could have BYU every home game starting in 2023 and beyond could be starting at eight o'clock or a little bit later. And then you could see them actually play on the road at noon at 10 a.m. Mountain time at 5 p.m. Mountain time. It's kind of funny how the new dynamics are going to shift because this is a conference that covers three different uh, three different time zones, the Eastern, Central, and Mountain time zones now. BYU is a big part of what the, Pac- not the Pac-12, the Big 12 is going to be doing moving forward, but it'll be somebody else running the ship. If you were to ask me who I think would be a very well-positioned person to take over this, and he's a natural name, he's been popping up left and right since this news broke, it's Oliver Luck. He's been a college administrator. He's been an AD. He's worked in NCAA uh, headquarters over there in Indianapolis. He has run a college football, uh, not college football league, a professional football league, the XFL, the original iteration of the XF- XFL before it folded. He was the commissioner of that. He has worked at so many different levels of sports, and not to mention, he's raised an NFL quarterback in Andrew Luck. Yeah, that is Andrew Luck's dad. And this is a dude who I think gets collegiate sports. He's got connections. Big 12. He has worked in Big 12 country for a number of years. If you want somebody who has got the expertise from different facets, looking uh, at different ways of how to go about uh, college football and college basketball and the governance of the various sports, I think you could do a lot worse than getting Oliver Luck. The other wild card in all of this, and you're, you're going to hear this, we did a locked on Big 12 roundtable. There could be a wild card with regards to the, what George Klyovkov was. He was an outsider when the Pac-12 picked him. He worked for MGM in Las Vegas, working in the entertainment sphere, putting together deals in terms of entertainment. He looks at things differently than an administrator who's been working inside collegiate sports his entire career, like a Bob Bullsby or even an Oliver Luck. So it'll be interesting to see who the Big 12 settles on. If they want to do this inside 90 days, Oliver Luck is available, and he strikes me as a guy who could make the move very, very quickly and could move into that position seamlessly and I think would be well-positioned to lead the Big 12 to future success. But it will be interesting. There's a new era of the Big 12. BYU fans will never know Bob Bowlesby to be their commissioner. That is the interesting dynamic in all of this. But I am looking forward to seeing what shakes out with regards to to the Big 12 and Bob Bowlesby's future because I still think he will be a voice. If he's going to be under contract until 2025, you can guarantee this will be a guy who is going to be in talks when it comes to the TV contracts. He'll be lending his expertise to whoever the new, the new commissioner is. He'll be making sure that they know how he went about things. He'll be a sounding board. He's got years and years of experience at the top levels of the various sports. He knows what he's doing, so he'll be a resource for who takes over, but it will not be Bob Bowlesby with his hands all over this. But I think BYU fans, you owe Bob Bowlesby a debt of gratitude. Thank you to him for bringing the Big 12 to Provo, bringing BYU into the fold, getting BYU out of a decade-long hinterland existence in independence. I don't think independence was a bad thing, 
But the stated ambition for BYU was to make it into the Power Five. They wanted to be part of the big dogs. They wanted to be playing for national championships. And you cannot do that outside the Power Five. I don't care how much you want to dream about it. It just will not happen in this day and age, especially in college football. So I think BYU fans, you say thank you to Bob Bowlesby. And now we look forward to seeing who the next guy will be manning that chair down there in Texas. But I look forward to it. And I also do wonder how things are going to change with regards to how the Big 12 operates moving forward as well. It's going to be a very interesting time. And anything that comes on that front, we'll be happy to cover for you guys. Make sure you guys are apprised of all the news involved in who the new Big 12 commissioner might be and how things are going to be operating as BYU gets ready to enter that conference. All right, coming up next, we'll talk about something that could affect BYU when they get to the Big 12 on the basketball front. That is the transfer portal. It giveth and it taketh away. Right now, it's taking away from BYU's roster. Not all that surprising a news, but we'll talk about Hunter Erickson and what this means for Mark Pope's squad here momentarily. But first, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. I love these protein bars, folks. I've got one right here. You can see that right there. That is the Rocky Road flavor. That is my wife's favorite flavor of all of them. I have some other ones that I'm a big fan of. Cherry Barcia is my all-time favorite. I just absolutely love that flavor. The Coconut Brownie Chunk, when you can get it, get your hands on it, it's a limited time flavor. It's incredible as well. But more importantly, if Built Bars, the texture of them maybe is too thick for you or just you don't like that texture, I'd encourage you guys to give the Built Puffs a chance. What they are is they are first of its kind protein-infused marshmallow that's shaped like a bar, covered in 100% chocolate, just like the Built Bars. Soft and easy to chew. The best part is they're light and airy. It's kind of a nice mix-up in terms of if you're not all in on the Built Bars. Built Puffs might be the answer for you guys. Get to Built.com right now to place your order. While you're there, please use the promo code LOCKED15. That is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off your order. You heard that right. Promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com. Order your Built Puffs or your Built Bars today and also support BYU football via name image and likeness agreement with the BYU football program they have as well once again lock 15 built.com support BYU football by supporting our friends at built bar time now to talk a little more about BYU basketball and that is the news that's coming out with regards to the future for the Cougars in what is happening with uh Hunter Erickson and his decision to enter the NCAA transfer portal. I have to say, this is not all that unsurprising in news. He was a guy who saw spot duty all this past season. I really like Hunter Erickson's game, but for whatever reason, he could never fully break into the, uh, the rotation. That's the word I was looking for rotation for BYU basketball for whatever Every reason just never worked out for him. I thought he was a pretty dogged defender, had elite athleticism. Uh, scoring was a big question mark. Can he score at the power five level for BYU moving into the big 12? But we'll never, ever know. I don't think about that. And that's the big thing I wonder is with regards to how BYU is going to go about shaping this roster. You now have Nate Hansen having entered the transfer portal. That one was completely non-shocking. He was a guy who was recruited by Dave Rose, never really factored into the future plans it felt like for the BYU basketball program. But Hunter Erickson was a guy who I felt like if he were to stick around, and there's still a chance he could stick around. He could decide to go in the transfer portal and decide, you know what, I'm going to stick around in Provo. I think he could take on a bigger role next year. I think he could develop into one of the starting guards for BYU if given the requisite time and he continues to hone his craft. He's got great size. He's got bet, he's got more size than Alex Barcelo and or T. John Lucas did this past season, and that's what he has going for him. He's got good length. He's, a, like I said, a dogged defender, a guy who really gets after it. And I think that is a positive if you're a BYU football fan, not BYU football fan, basketball fan, is that BYU, in their mind, Maybe they're thinking they're going to upgrade the talent once again if Hunter Erickson decides to move on. They currently will have two scholarships open. That is what it currently stands at. But I don't think this is the last uh, decision by a current BYU player on the roster to transfer. I'm not going to go out there and speculate about what guys may end up entering the transfer portal. They all have their God-given right under the new NCAA rules to go and look at their options. They could obviously opt to remain in Provo, but... I think Hunter Erickson's smart to examine his options because if he's not breaking into the rotation, he's probably frustrated. Uh, frankly, probably frustrated that he just did not get the chance he thought he was deserving of by Mark Pope. And this is not to come out and say that Mark Pope did him dirty or something is up and nefarious, any of that. It's just the simple fact of how the college basketball sphere is trending right now is you're going to see more and more players out in the world are going to go after 
their options with regards to playing at a new program. And you're going to have it happen every season. It would not surprise me in some day in the future, there is a kid who signs with a program. I'm saying this is BYU. This is going to be a college basketball program at some level who is going to sign with a college basketball program. And you're going to see him annually enter the transfer portal and evaluate his options. I truly believe this will happen. There will be some kid who has the distinction of going four or five years every season entering the transfer portal, whether he transfers at all or he sticks with the program he's been with, he will examine those options. That is what is going to happen. It's just kind of the how things are going to be in the college basketball sphere. And I, I just I think that Hunter Erickson is trying to find the best situation for himself. Do I think sticking in Provo is a good spot for him? I do because, I, like I said, I think he could develop into a very nice player for BYU. But at the same time, BYU, Mark Pope, and his coaches, they may be looking at their options out there in the transfer portal. And trust me, if you read anything on Twitter, you pay attention to any of these uh, Twitter handles that are tweeting out who's got interest from X school, BYU's featured quite often. The BYU staff is hell-bent on upgrading this roster. I think that they went a little overboard this past year in terms of opting for elite athleticism in their minds versus shooting because we all saw that offense just absolutely faltered uh, throughout the season. They never really had a consistent second option on offense outside of Alex Barcelo. And even A.B., he struggled at times during this past season. So I think BYU, they're going to try and find the happy medium and keep the athleticism on the roster, but at the same time, go out and find guys who can really fill it up. There's a big question right now for me looking forward to next year's basketball team. Where is the scoring going to come from outside of Foose Traore? Is Foose going to have to average 25 next year? Right now, it sure looks that way. But I think you need to go out and find an elite wing player. And I've said this on the podcast previously. I had a conversation with somebody who's far more in the know with regards to BYU basketball currently. And the staff, they are intent on finding a legit wing player who can score off the wing. Is that a Jake Toulson type who's more of a sharp shooting th uh, three-point guy? Maybe so. But at the same time, you can obviously find a guy who's a slasher who can take it to the hole and score that way and get the old school three-point play. You just need somebody who is a consistent scoring threat. That is what BYU needs more than anything on this roster right now. And if you can find two of those guys, that's going to make BYU even better. Because if you have Foose Traore, a guard who can fill it up, say Sean East, who's got BYU in his final six, a Juco a scorer, is a lefty who's averaged 25, I think, at the Juco level this past year. If you can get a guy like Sean East, you get a legit wing guy who's 6'6 six, six to 6'7 six, guy who's a, maybe a 3 and D dude but is able to create his own shot, and then you got Foose Traore to man the middle, that is a great trio to build on. It's easier said than done. Let me be very clear about that. It's not something you go out there and say, okay, well, BYU, now they're going to go out and find this guy. It's not as easy as just saying that. That's, that's I'll be frank about that, but they do need to endeavor to go about trying to find that guy because if you can, or those guys, if you can find that, you're going to be well positioned, I feel like, getting ready to go into the Big 12 because, man, we just saw the last two national champions in the NCAA tournament are both Big 12 programs who are not departing the, the, the premises. Kansas and Baylor, they're going to be sticking around for the long haul. BYU has got their work cut out for them when it comes to basketball. I am of the opinion that they can compete, but they are going to have to do some major overhauls of their roster to compete in that league because, man, are you facing some elite, elite squads out there. And that's the biggest thing about it is I just I, I look at what's going on for BYU basketball right now, and there's so many questions out there and not a lot of answers. And I'm hoping we get to see some answers relatively quickly. All right, coming up here in a moment, we will catch up on everything else that happened in BYU sports over the weekend. Had a great opportunity to watch uh, BYU baseball last night in action. Uh, tough loss. We'll recap that. We'll also talk about BYU softball. Their game essentially rained out. And also some national rankings. We'll get to all of that here momentarily. Also want to remind you guys that today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models of all vehicles, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning as your Odyssey an LX or an EX and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brands that their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and also in your pocket. So save time and money when 
using Rock Auto. I have used it myself. I'm going to see if I can uh, show you guys this. So this is actually uh, my box. Most recently, I got it from Rock Auto. Hopefully, you guys can see that. I'm off video a little bit here, but hopefully, you can see that Rock Auto right there. Yeah. So I had to get a new blinker light for my car, and guess what? I ordered it, and it showed up, and it's been absolutely fantastic. The best part is the price was absolutely incredible. Why would you choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, the Honda Odyssey we just talked about, a fuel pump is $353 from a chain store, just $216 from Rock Auto. They are a family business, been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every customer, and they've got every part you could ever need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet, and anywhere in between or beyond that. So go explore their easy-to-use website website today to find the solution for all of your auto parts needs go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck please make sure you write locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably prices all the parts your car will ever need that's rockauto.com Today's show is also brought to you in part by our friends over at Intercap Lending. And there is a reason that no lender helps more families in the state of Utah with their mortgage needs than our friends at Intercap. And simply put, Intercap Lending gets deals done. They feature a quick and simple process. They close loans two weeks faster than the industry average. And although fast is great, the ultimate goal is to create a stress-free home loan process for you, the consumer. And that is what Locked On's personal loan officer at Intercap Lending, Steve Carter has been delivering to hundreds of locked on listeners so far, including locked on founder of the Podfather himself, David Locke. And let's be real, my friends, if Steve can help anybody uh, keep on track, it's David. And he did that throughout the entire process. Steve can really help anybody after experiencing that. And although Intercap is a relatively new sponsor here on Locked On Cougars, it's not a new company. Intercap has been assisting customers with all of their mortgage needs since 1978. That is 44 years of experience. And Steve Carter has been providing Locked On listeners with that same experience since 2018. Intercap is headquartered here in Utah, but licensed to help with all of your mortgage needs in more than 40 states nationwide. So give Steve a call. He'd love nothing more than to answer all your questions, help you guys out. His direct number, 385-800-8528. That is 385-800-8528. You will not find a more responsive loan officer. I can promise you that. Check that out online as well. Intercaplending.com if you want to learn more there. Or get Steve that call. 385-800-8528. Intercap Lending, NMLS number 190465. Intercap Lending is an equal housing lender. All right, time now to round out today's show. Let's say first off, congratulations to track and field, BYU track and field, ranked number 10 in the country. A very nice mark for them. Obviously, uh, this is a proud program. It's got a great history. This is the women's outdoor track and field team. Let me be clear about the rank number 10. The men's team ranked number 13. So both programs inside the top 15 nationally. And this is where BYU makes its hay in regards to track and field. The indoor season, great. BYU does good in some of the different events there. But when you get into the outdoor season, that is where Ed Eyestone and his teams absolutely get after. And that's the fun part about this is BYU has got a huge opportunity staring them in the face. Think about the teams that are in front of BYU on this list. Texas, this is the women's side. Texas, Texas A&M, Florida, Texas Tech, Arkansas, Kentucky, Baylor, Oregon, LSU. And then BYU is the lone cold weather school, so-called. Oregon, I guess you could technically count them as that. I would not count them as that. Uh, ranked inside the top 10. Very impressive numbers for BYU track and field so far and hoping to keep it up. And hopefully they will remain inside that top 10, if not move up this season. Very cool to see that. Congratulations to the BYU track and field programs. Now on to softball. They have their game against Utah postponed due to unplayable field conditions. That game that was just scheduled for yesterday at Utah has been rescheduled for early May, May 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. That'll be up there at Dumkey uh, State Family Stadium in Salt Lake City. BYU will now prepare for a three-game series this weekend when the weather is supposed to be a lot better. They'll be hosting LMU and West Coast Conference play on Thursday and Friday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in a three-game set on that side. And then BYU baseball, man, if I'm Mike Littlewood, I'm wondering what in the world I did to offend the baseball gods down there in St. George. BYU loses once again in St. George to Dixie State 7-5 to at Bruce Hurst Field. Of course, that's a field that Mike Littlewood is very familiar with considering he was the head coach there and actually won a national championship as the head coach of what was then the Dixie State Rebels, uh, soon to be Utah Tech. But BYU will return home for a three-game set this weekend against Santa Clara Friday night. It's date night out there at the ballpark at Miller Park. All those games will be on BYU TV and also streaming on the BYU TV app as well as radio broadcasts on the BYU Sports Network. 
It was fun to watch some baseball last night. I had a chance to run a little bit of a simulcast as I was watching the Jazz play as well. But tough loss for BYU baseball, but hopefully they can regain some of their composure and get three wins this weekend over Santa Clara. The Cougars, speaking of the baseball program, now 14-12 and 12 on the season. Still above 500. i I'm still okay with BYU sitting at above 500 at this point in the season, but hoping that they can turn it on at some point down the stretch. All right, so there you go. You guys are apprised of everything you need to know as a BYU fan here on this Wednesday. A huge thank you once again for joining us, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. want to encourage you guys now to get over to Locked On, uh, the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. I almost said Locked On Big 12. Do the same thing. Locked On Big 12, Locked On NFL Draft, both great podcasts, one covering the Big 12 Conference, which BYU will be joining. I was a part of the roundtable as I am weekly that we'll be posting that on our YouTube feed as well as our podcast feed here later on this week. But in addition, check out the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. The guys over there bringing the draft to life every single day. All latest with regards to prospects, how trades are shaking things up. There's that big trade with the Saints uh, trading first-round picks with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles to get two first-round picks this year while the Eagles dropped one that they had three of to next year crazy stuff like that they've got you covered with regards to how teams are looking at that and how it is going to affect the draft order draft philosophy they got it all covered so check it out it's the locked on nfl draft podcast wherever you get your podcast it's free and available just like this one and that is going to do it for today's edition of locked on cougars hope you guys are all doing fantastic out there in cougar nation come back tomorrow we'll have more for you guys this has been the locked on cougars podcast for april 6th 2022